So today we're going to cover the Crew AI installation on a Windows machine. The earlier tutorial I had done was only for Mac users. So now because there is a few differences when installing it on Windows, I want to be able to walk you through this installation. This is going to be a document that I'm going to give you and it has all the steps of everything you need to do in order to get it running on your Windows machine. Now I'm going to walk you step by step in this tutorial. So once you're done watching this, you can reference the document, but you'll have a clear idea on how to do it on your own. Now I want to emphasize this is not meant to be a technical tutorial. I don't go a lot into any of the technical details of why you need to do this and that. This is meant for you to be able to install Cray, start working with Cray, even if you don't have any technical experience. So it doesn't matter that you're not a programmer, that you're not a developer, that you're not in computer science. This is literally meant for you to be able to watch it, follow it step by step, and start and be able to start working with Cray on your own. Again, just like my other guides, I do emphasize trying to make it as user friendly as possible, especially if you're a beginner. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So this is a completely clean Windows machine. There's nothing installed on it. I'm running a virtual Windows machine on my Mac, so we don't need to get into that either. But again, this is assuming that you have nothing installed on your computer. So that way you can start from scratch. So first step we have on our list is we're going to download and install Python. We have the link right here. So we're going to open that. We're going to click download Python. It's going to download here. Once it's done downloading, we're going to run it. So here you do want to check these just to make sure we can use it on our command line. Then click install now. Here it's going to ask you about the permissions. Just click yes. Once it's done, simply click close. And just like that, you're done with step one. So now we're going to go ahead and install Scoop. So all Scoop does, it lets us install other programs using the command line. So whenever you want to run anything in the command line, all you have to do is here on search, open up your PowerShell. So this is just how you run commands in your Windows machine. We're going to be using this quite a bit for this tutorial. So if you've never played with it, that's completely fine. I'm going to show you literally exactly what you have to paste on here. So in order to install Scoop, we just have to copy this command. And we're going to paste it on our terminal. Now the whole point of Scoop is again that you install programs through the command line. So it does need some permissions to apply to it. So I'm just going to click yes to all. And once it's done, you're going to get this message that says Scoop was installed successfully. So the other thing I do want you to get in the habit of doing, especially if you install things through the command line, you want to make sure that the installation is being read by your machine. So we can do that, let's say with Python, we want to make sure that this terminal that we're using can actually pick up the Python things we installed. So we're going to click Python version. And because we're getting this Python 3.12, it means that it can find that installation in your computer. So we're going to go ahead and try that with Scoop as well, since we just installed that. Scoop dash dash version. And also it's able to tell us what version of Scoop we have. So we just finished step two. Now next with Scoop, we're going to go ahead and install Pipex. You need that for the Crew AI project that we're going to work with. And just to show you that example, this is the error that you're going to get if your terminal isn't picking up on the installation that you did. So we're going to type pipex dash dash version. And see so you get this error, it says it's not recognized, it, that it can't find it. So that's what we're trying to avoid. So we really don't want this mess right here right now. So we're just, so we're just going to type clear and press enter and that cleans up your terminal. So we're going to enter this command into our terminal. Just copy it, paste it, press enter. And here we have that our installation is finished. Let's just double check that by typing pipx version. And here we're able to see the version that was installed. And then we're also going to enter this command. All right, so that completes step three. We have pipex installed. So now we're gonna go ahead and install poetry with this command. And after this, we're gonna run pipex ensure path once more. I don't have that in the guide, but I'll make sure to add that step again. So once we finish with this, we're going to install git. 
Now all Git does is this is what's going to allow you to download the code for Korea or rather the code project that we're going to use. So you need this in your computer in order to run that command. And also in the future, if you plan working with other code or other frameworks or other open source software, this is going to be very helpful both for you to download it as well as for you to upload your own projects if you do decide to share them with other people. So we're going to click Windows 64 bit install. Now, if you don't know what version of Windows you have, all you have to do is type system information here on your search. Click this icon right here, it says system. And right here, you'll be able to see which version of Windows you have. For my case, we have 64 bit, so that's what we're gonna download. And once it finishes running, we're gonna install it. So just click next through these menus. You don't have to change any fancy settings on here. This is just the basic installation that we're going to do. We see here that it's done installing, so we're just going to click finish. Now this is just going to open up a page for you to see some of the information on Git, but you don't really need that right now. So you can close it after it opens. And here in our terminal, we're going to make sure that our Git installation is able to be accessed by our terminal. Just type git dash dash version. Now see, we finished installing it, but we're getting this error that the command is not recognized. Don't freak out whenever you see this, these red letters, all you have to do is close your terminal and start it up again. And this is gonna be something that happens pretty commonly. If you install something new on your machine, you typically wanna restart the terminal that you're using. So we're just gonna open PowerShell. So now we're gonna test the git installation again. And see, just like that, that error is gone. It tells us what version of Git we're using, so nothing to worry about. All right, so we're, we just finished up step five, so we're about a quarter of the way there. Now, I do want to emphasize to you, if this feels a little bit tedious, a little bit frustrating, I want, you, I want to explain to you that that's not something you should worry about too much. Working with technology, it can seem a little bit complicated at times, but believe me, whether it's you as a novice or somebody else that has been working with this for years, Setting anything up is often one of the more frustrating parts of the process. Now, I don't think anybody particularly enjoys it, but it is just something that comes with the game. So if you do want to get into technology, if you want to keep working with technology, it's just going to be one of those things that you kind of have to muscle through. And it doesn't necessarily get easier, but you know, you just get better at solving these kind of problems, looking stuff up. And now with tools like ChatGPT that help you figure out what the problem is quicker, I think that's all the more reason why you should embrace working with technology, especially if you're a beginner. So let's continue and I congratulate you for getting this far. So here I just add another step just to emphasize testing your installations as you do them. That way you don't freak out if something isn't working later on. We've already tested them, so we can move on to installing VS Code on our machine. So we're just going to click this link. It's going to take you to the page. It's going to tell you to download it for Windows. And just like everything else we've been doing, once it finishes loading to your machine, we're going to install it. So here you're just going to agree to the installation. All VS Code is, it's going to be the tool that we're going to use to edit our Crew AI project. So we're not going to work with code too much, but you are going to see code on your machine. So if you've never done that before, then I think you might be a little bit excited because you're going to have an open project in Python on your machine. So I think that's pretty cool. So when it's done installing, you can just click finish. And by default, it's going to open VS Code. Now again, don't get to or one with anything on here. This is just to edit your code. You don't need to worry about that at this moment, but we are going to use this tool later on. So we have VS Code installed. Now we're going to install Visual Studio. We're not going to use this tool, but what does come with this installation is some libraries that your Windows machine needs in order to run some of the other tools we're going to use properly. So we're going to click download Visual Studio community right here. And again, I don't mean to try and get too technical on this, but when you install this Visual Studio program on your computer, you're also going to be able to install some developer tools that include some C++ libraries. C++ is just a programming language that's commonly used on Windows applications. And while we're not going to do that right now, we do need some of those packages in order to run our Crew AI project. So here you're just going to click continue through the menu. So once it finishes loading, you're going to get this menu screen. The one you're going to select 
is going to be the one right here that says desktop development with C++. Mm -hmm. So click that one. And it's going to show you here the things that it's going to be installing for it. Mm -hmm. Now, I know for sure you need to have this Windows 11 SDK and as well as the, the C++ newer versions of this. But just to keep it safe, I know I'm just going to leave these all on here and I'm going to install it. It is a little bit hefty. It's about 12 gigabytes for it to install. So if you don't have space in your machine, you might want to clear some of it out if possible. But we do need these tools or rather these libraries in order to run our project. So this does take a bit of time to install. So while this happens, we can continue installing some of the other things that we need for our project. So the next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to download the project from the GitHub repository to our machine. And that's going to be in this link right here. So when you go to this link, this is where all the examples of crew AI projects exist. GitHub is a pretty popular platform used by developers to upload and share their projects. So if you do plan on diving more into technology, you're going to get, you're going to get used to seeing these kind of pages pretty often. And right now what we want to do is we want to download this to our machine and we're going to do that using Git on our computer. So typically, if you see another project you want to download, you would go to that project page, click code here, and then click copy. And then you would type that in your terminal after you install git. So the command would be git clone, and then you would just paste that link that you copied. So you see how there's the link for that project, and then just press enter. And right now it's downloading it to your machine. Now you don't have to remember that command. I included that for you right here within the page. So it's just git clone and then the exact command. So you can just copy and paste this, no need to remember it. And we can see here that it's 100% done. So now that we did that, we're gonna go ahead and open this project with our VS Code tool that we downloaded. So the way you do that is you go to your VS Code. We're gonna put this in full screen. You can go to File, Open Folder, and in your folders, you should see this folder called Crew AI Examples. So we're going to click that. And these are all different projects. We just want to work with the starter template. So we're going to click this one. And it's just looking for a folder. It's not going to show you the files on here. So then just click Select Folder. And just like that, it will open up for you. So these are the main files that make up your project. Now, we don't need to get too much into these right now. But we are going to change some of them up just a little bit. But first, we're going to move on to the next step. And just to double check that everything's good, we want to check that our installations are working properly, but we're not going to do it on this terminal that we've been using right here. Within VS Code, you can actually open a terminal within that program, and that's just for it to be a little bit, a little bit more user-friendly once you start writing code. So click Terminal, New Terminal. Again, you see here how it says Partial. It's just running a version of Partial within VS Code, and it's starting out from inside this folder this project folder that you're looking at. So again, let's just check our installations to make sure that we're able to access them. So we're going to check Python. So see how we're having that issue. Now it's saying Python not found, even though we already installed it. And we check in PowerShell, we can see that it is on there. So Python version. So that's a little bit of a discrepancy. Again, I don't want you to get frustrated with this. I know because I mean, it's just something that happens sometimes. So all you have to do is you can go to file, exit to completely close out VS Code and you're going to restart it. So we're going to open VS Code again and then usually it'll just open up back on the last folder that you had. So that's pretty neat as well. So let's try again, write Python version. Great. So we can see that Python is working on here now. Let's go ahead and check the other installations. Let's do pipx version because we do need pipx. So we can see that on there as well. Let's go ahead and do poetry version. I misspelled that, so that's not going to work. It says it doesn't exist. Again, we can see poetry. And last we did get, I believe. So just like that, we can see that all our installations are available on the terminal within VS Code, and that's going to be really important as we move forward with this tutorial. So we checked our installations, step 10, and again, you're like halfway there. I really want you to keep going. If you already have, we already got this far, you have momentum, it's going to be, it's going to feel so nice once you complete it. So, I mean, I know it's a little off topic, but I really want to cheer you on because 
even when I do tutorials on other stuff I'm learning about, it's really easy to quit. If you have something else to do, pause the video, write it down, put it in the calendar when you're going to continue again, because you're pretty much almost there. So, and this is the cool part, because we're going to work a little bit with code, just a tiny bit. We're going to edit some things here. And again, you don't have to worry about it, but doing the wrong thing, because I'm going to show you step by step exactly what you need to do. So for step 11, we have here is create and edit pyproject.toml. So we're going to create what they call this is just a TOML file. So what this file is going to contain is just going to have information relating to everything that your crew AI project needs in order to run. So let's make that file first. So in VS Code, you're going to right click new file and just call it pyproject.toml. Just like that. It's completely blank. No problem. So I actually have it pasted on here the link that shows you exactly where you're going to copy for this file so you're going to click this link right here and this is still just from the crew ai documentation this was just a file that's used for a different project so you can do control a to copy everything or you can just click here i forget you can just click here and you're going to paste that on here and anytime you make changes to files on vs code make sure to save you can do it either by file save or, you, or as you saw there you can just do control s so make sure you save your files whenever you do it not that you're going to lose them but that is going to be important for whenever you try to run your project so again we're able to create our toml file and paste the information that it needs and again not to get too technical on here but all these all everything that is written in this file are just references to tools or libraries or other things that the project is going to need in order to run properly so now we're going to run this command called poetry install no root. We're just going to copy it. And what this is going to do is this command is going to look at everything that's in your .toml file and it's going to install it on there without you having to do anything else. So again, on your terminal, you're going to paste that command, poetry install no root. And I believe it's two dashes, so I'm going to correct that. So once you type that, it'll start looking at that pyproject.toml folder, which we made here. And it's going to start looking through this list and installing everything that it needs for the project. All right. And just like that, we're able to install all the dependencies from our pyproject.toml file. So we're going to go ahead and move on with the next step. So for step 14, we're going to run the command poetry shell. So I'm going to run it and talk a little bit about what it does. So here in your command line, you can type poetry shell enter so here after you enter that you see this little line that says spawning shell and then you see this where it says virtual environment core ai basically what we can do with this command is just like how in powershell you're able to run commands on here and really those commands depend on all the things that you had installed within your machine right like remember when we we're checking python version to see if python worked and this command only worked after we installed Python. Same thing happens with poetry. Poetry creates its own environment that has all these things we installed on it, but in only to make use of them, you need to start up a poetry shell. So it's almost like its own little command line based off the things that you installed. And again, this is just a virtual environment. So you, you don't have to worry about installing or uninstalling these if you start a different project and you don't have to worry about you know, things kind of conflicting with each other. So that's probably as simple as I can get. But basically, in order to run your project, you need to start up your poetry show. So now within our poetry show, we're going to install a couple of things. We're going to do pip install crew AI. And then for the next step, the next thing we need to install is pip install python decouple. So once that is done installing, we're going to go ahead and change our .env file. We're simply going to edit the name of it. So here in your project, this .env example, we're not going to delete this. We just want to rename it. So .env just stands for environment. So in your project, this is going to be where your project looks for certain information. Again, in this case, this is where it's going to look for your open API key and for your open AI organization ID. I'm going to show you right now how you can retrieve those. But for your project to work it out, we do need we do need to rename this. So let's leave it like that. And now I'm going to show you how you can get your open API, your open AI API key. 
So we're going to go to platform.openai.com. Here, if you haven't signed up, which I assume you have because you've been using ChatGPT, you're going to go ahead and log in. So once you sign in or sign up, you're going to get taken to this page. The first thing you're going to need is going to be your organization ID. So from here, this is going to be unique to you. Don't give this out to anybody else. That's why I have blocked off. You can copy this and you can add it on here on your file to where it says OpenAI underscore organization ID. And then remember, any changes you make, you always save. The other thing you're going to need to do is go to API keys. Now, if this is a new account or the first time you access this, you are going to have to verify your account. It's going to do it either through email or phone number. I don't really remember. But once you verify that, it's going to be a quick process. You're going to be able to create new API keys, as many as you want. But what I do want you to keep in mind is never give these out to anybody. Don't share them. Don't post them. Don't ever show them because your API key is the password that ties your account and the usage you make of it to you. And then the last thing you're going to want to do is you're going to go to settings and go to billing. Now here, this is where it's going to show your payment history. You cannot use OpenAI API keys without paying first. Anytime your key gets used, rather anytime you use the OpenAI services with your API keys, you're going to get charged a little bit. And that's kind of like the system that they have in place for allowing you to use their services, right? You get to use OpenAI's, you know, large language models and in exchange you pay a little bit for each time you use it. Now you do have to add some payment details because the way it works with this account is you basically have to prepay before you can start using it. When I started out, I just put $10. And again, as you start doing more and more API calls, that's gonna get built from this prepaid amount. If you leave it at zero, if you don't add a payment method, it's just not gonna work. So, I mean, at least that, you know, you can add one, $5, whatever you want, but if there's no payment in there, your API keys are just not going to work, period. So once you verify your account and you request your API key and you add some funds to your account, you can go ahead and copy and paste that API key into your project. And that's going to go right here in this spot. And again, after you add it, make sure to save your file, either file save or control save, control S. So now we retrieved our API keys and we did a couple steps. We verified the account, we added funds to your account. So now what we wanna do is we wanna to check to make sure that the API keys work. And the way we're gonna do this, I mixed these steps up a little bit, but I can just edit that, is you're gonna copy this command into your terminal. And again, the main thing here is that you edit this out. This is just a placeholder. So all this that you see that's in black and these blue letters, you're gonna just highlight this and copy it. But before we run that command in our terminal, we want to add our API key, so let's just edit it. Just click File, New Text File. All we're going to do is we're going to use this text file to paste the command we just copied. And in this little section that says your API key, we're going to go ahead and post what that is for you. So again, just copy your API key again. You should have it in your .env file. Just go ahead and highlight it, copy it, and set it in here between these quotations. And again, you're going to copy all this one more time. You're going to open a new terminal on your PowerShell and you're going to paste it on here and you press enter. And here we got this response because all we were doing in this little test is we're just asking it to translate the text to French. So the fact that it responded with the French response just means that the API key is working and we we're able to send a request to open AI using our API key. And again, this is crucial. You need to have an API key or some way to connect to a large language model in order for Crew AI to work. And with this, you can close this file. You don't need to save it. That was just to edit it. So now that we tested our API key, we're going to move on to the next step. We already added our organization ID. That's what the first thing we did. So we can go ahead. We're going to do a tiny little bit of coding. There's some things we need to edit out in our Crew AI project in order for it to work. And this was just due to some updates that they made in the project relative to when this original template project was made. So all we have to do is open our tasks.py file and we're gonna add these lines to the code. And again, if you're a little bit scared about messing with code, if it's a little sketchy, right here I put some screenshots so you can see exactly what it's gonna look like after you add it, you know exactly where to copy it, where to paste it and you won't have any issues with that. So we're just gonna go ahead and copy this line. We're gonna go to, we're gonna go to our test.py and right here after agent, we're just gonna press enter and then paste it on there. 
So you see here, there's task one name. There's also another one here called task two name. So in here, we're also going to paste it. And then we're going to go ahead and save it. And just like that, if this was your first time coding, you just edited your first line of code and you weren't even typing hello world, which is what everybody does when they start coding. But that's beside the point. And again, these screenshots for visibility, for clarity, you're not going to get lost. Don't get scared. It's done. And just like that, guys, congratulations. You completed your setup for the for the crew AI project. So let's before we sing victory, let's test it out with our command python main.py. All this does is it runs your main file, which is what has the logic to start running your crew AI project. So again, we're just going to press, press clear here real quick in python main.py. And we can see that it's starting up just from, these are just some warnings from some older, I think some older libraries. So we got an error here, guys. There is one command I'm sure I forgot to follow. I thought I had put it in the, I thought I had put it in the list and I think I might've skipped it. So yeah, I skipped this step. We were supposed to do pip install, duck, duck, go search. That's again, that's a tool that this project uses. And if you try to run it without installing something first, you're gonna get an error. Again, if for some reason you get some error, maybe you forgot a step, maybe you just need to restart VS code. You're basically gonna see what they call the logs regarding the error. Now, these all seem very extensive and very scary. Just for the future, if you see something like this, all you really need to pay attention, all you really need to pay attention to is either the first part of it or the last part. Now, if we look at the last part of the error, we see this import error could not import DuckDuck search go. Python package, and then it tells you, please install, you know, DuckDuckGo. So that's pretty neat about anything you do in this space that you kind of get in the habit of finding out the quickest way to solve the problems. Don't ever for a moment think that somebody sits through and read all, reads all of these logs and then, you know, just knows how to read super fast and knows all this. Not at all. There might be one or two people in the world that can do that, but I'm definitely not one of them and I wouldn't expect you to be. So again, we're just going to copy this command that it gave us, which again, this was my bad that I skipped it. I had it on the sheet, but I just didn't see it because I was getting excited. So we did our installation and then now we can go ahead and try Python main that pie again. So it's running and just like that, you see this right here, it says, welcome to create a template. It's asking for a variable here. We haven't changed anything in this template project. That's what we talk about in the other tutorials, but now you can see here that you have this, you know, thing running. So we're just going to type whatever we type hot dogs and we're going to type, I don't know, beach day. So really what it's doing right now, it's taking that description we gave it. All right, so full disclosure, guys, I got an error in that time running in around two. That error had nothing to do with the steps that we were following, but rather I put the wrong organization key. Um, for the organization, organization ID value, I was using a different one from the API key that I was using because the one that I put originally was just on that sample account that was showing you how, how your screen was going to look like when you first start up your open AI account. So I apologize mm -hmm. for that. So now I think the third time's the charm for sure. Okay. So we have our welcome to create AI template. Again, let's put something like Sonia. Let's put Jiu Jitsu. So I know it seems like nonsense, but again, we're just trying out and again, we keep getting this error, error code 401, no such organization. It shows the organization ID I have right there, which I thought was the one that I had just set up for my, for the account I'm using the API key from, but we're still getting an error. So let's make sure that within our API key, or let's make sure that within our .env file, we don't have any extra spaces, extra characters, or anything like that. So I'm gonna try my best to show it here. But clearly you see how this quotation, single quotation is on the separate line. Well, the thing that makes it jump from this space to this space is an invisible character called a new line character, which means there's something in here that tells it to displace this. We just can't see it. We see why we think it's empty, but that's actually not. There's actually an extra character in there. I'm assuming that was the problem, but with things like API keys, 
you know, an extra space, an extra new line character is going to affect, you know, the value of it. So corrected that, we saved that. Let's try it again. And the only reason why I'm leaving these troubleshooting steps is because, again, these are the type of things that could happen to anybody. So I don't want you to feel like, you know, you're at a loss if you get those errors too. So again, variable, let's put dog, let's put, I don't know, cat. So starting to run, it says entering executor chain. So that means it's running. And here we got our custom result. Now what we typed in and what we got back doesn't matter. What we know for a fact now is that we install our CreAI project on our Windows machine we set it up with our tools that we needed in order to run it. Because of this result, we know that all those tools were installed the way they were supposed to and that we were able to use our OpenAI API key in order to make a request. So basically, CrewAI makes the request of these commands that you give it. It uses OpenAI's large language models in order to you know figure out what that answer is gonna be and then sets it back to you. Again, the point of this tutorial was just to help you set it up on a Windows machine. I'm going to link below the videos where I actually talk about the things that you're going to edit in your Crew AI project in order to make it do the things you want it to do, whether it's custom tasks, whether it's custom agents, all that you're going to change on this same project. You're really just going to edit the definitions of what's on here in your agents.py file and your task.py file. And again, a lot of it is just going to be, it's going to be similar to writing prompts in ChatGPT, but now you have multiple instances talking to each other. Guys, I really want to thank you and I really want to congratulate, congratulate you for finishing this tutorial. For those of you that requested that are watching this, I also really want to take, thank you all for, you know, reaching out to me and telling me that this is something you wanted. Again, this helps me make content. At the end of the day, I make content because I think it's interesting, because because I think it's fun for me more than anything because I want it to be helpful to others. So reach out to me through Discord. If you want a one-on-one -on -one call, you can also book that with me. Join the Facebook group, whatever you need to reach me at, you know, I try to reply the best that I can. So, you know, just, you know, feel free to let me know what it is, something you're stuck on, something you need help with. And also, I really want to thank you guys. Today, I hit 100 subscribers. To me, it seems crazy. Um, more than anything, what that means to me is that you guys are finding this useful. So I plan on continuing to make projects like these, tutorials like these, try to make them as beginner friendly as possible and just to make sure that people can start using these AI tools for whatever they need in their personal life or in their business. Again, if there's some use case you're curious about, if there's something you have trouble with, reach out to me. And again, whether you have questions about the technical aspect, you're, you're a little more curious about AI, or you'd like to know how you can use AI and tools like these in your business, you can book a free one-on-one -on -one with me. Other than that, I just want to thank you guys for all the support, the comments, the feedback, and I'll see you all in the next one.